So the second talk is by Albrecht Schmidt. The title is Ordering the Speed of Reality, Exploring Visual Slow Motion to Amplify Human Perception Using Augmented Reality. Albrecht, could you start? Oh, can you hear me? Yes. And can you see my screen? Yes. So I'm presenting live, and I just sort of want to start my clock, and then we uh, we can go. So the nice thing is some of my co-authors are online as well. So Thomas Koch, uh, I can even see, and Pascal, uh, I have just seen he is online, but he doesn't have a video uh, if he wants to wave. But Pascal is also uh, online. So this was work uh, done at the University of Munich in Germany. Uh, and Gabrielle, she was a summer intern. And there is Pascal now also uh, visible. So uh, Gabrielle, uh, she was with us in the summer and we built that uh, system. So what was our motivation for doing that? So we're quite excited about the notion of a cyborg, the idea of uh, extending the human body. Uh, and if you look at fiction as well as research, perception is a key thing. Very often we think of cyborgs as uh, beings that have an advanced perception. And our question was now, what does this take to create a new perception and how does this link to reality? So, so one of the question is, what is reality? And if you look even back in a very early philosophy, reality is linked to how we perceive the world. And now if you think about things, there are a lot of things you really strongly believe in. You believe that certain people are governing your country and you may not even have seen them. So you perceive things and the perception shapes your reality. And as this conference now, we are all virtual. And so the interface we have shapes the reality we have. And for us, this question is, how can we start playing with this question, how reality changes if we are able to change uh, how we perceive things? This is not completely new. And uh, we see ourselves in a tradition of people who have been working towards augmenting the human mind, augmenting the human body, augmenting what we can do. And what I find really interesting is the work by Douglas Engelbart, the mother of all demos. It is very much about sort of linking places. It's an early video conference system. And here what we see is the idea, once you link people, you tear down boundaries of perception. And if we think of the technologies we have now, be it teleconferencing, be the means for recording things, we can imagine that within the next 20 to 30 years, we may get to a point where we don't really know if we are in a place or if we just have transported ourselves into that place. And a lot of this related work of work which was done early was really to simulate the reality as we perceive it. So the video conference, the optimal video conference at the moment for a lot of people is if it would feel like in the same place, as if we would all be together. For us, in our work, we really ask the question, what is it if we lose, uh, if we are able to lose the boundaries, if we are not stuck to the reality, if we can alter reality? And here comes the first part. We looked at sensors and sensing. And I think the best humans can do is something like we can view things with 20 frames per second. We have a very limited resolution. And so a lot of the work that looks at augmentation is really, can we do this the same remote? Can we do this in, in the same way? And for us now, the question is, can we build a visual perception system that uses the advantage of advanced sensing technologies, but com 
binds them with the ease of use we have with our own sensors, with our own senses. So using your eyesight is really, really easy. You learn it as a child, it is really easy. You look around, you focus on things, you change your uh, focal areas, you change your attention. If you compare this to using a camera, that's much more complicated. So the question is, can we separate the sensor hardware from the processing? Can we use new sensor hardware, but still use our ability to uh, focus, to change attention and combine those two in order to see things we could not see before, but without having sort of an awkward camera looking at things. So our guiding example is the following. So what you see there is uh, two streams. So the, the first one is we see there is a bird sitting at a harbor wall. Uh, and sort of if we look at a normal speed, uh, there is the bird, it flaps its wing and it's gone. So if we watch this with the normal speed, our reality would see the bird and it would be very quickly gone. Now we could imagine there is one interesting moment in this whole thing. It's basically when the bird leaves, when it starts its wings. And so the question is, would the amplified reality be, we see it, once there is motion, once we concentrate on that motion, we would slow down reality so we can see the bird. And then once it's gone, we go back to normal time where we basically have to speed up for a certain time. Otherwise, we are not really sort of uh, back in the reality. And this, uh, looking at this, gives us a number of questions. So what are these challenges if we build such a system? And our approach was really to build it in order to understand the challenges. So one of the contributions that we have in this paper is really that we have understood the challenges uh, and we're still sort of in an early phase of getting solutions. So how do we go about technically to use augmented reality in order to change the temporal perception? And I think this is one of the things where we got the furthest. So using technology to slow down, basically we separate camera from presentation so we can do the slowing down. The second one is a really hard one and that has very fundamental questions is how to overcome the decoupling of the perceived speed and the real process. So if you sit somewhere and the world goes slower and faster, it doesn't really matter much. If you try to catch a ball that you see in slow motion, it's not going to work. If you try to walk, it's not going to work. So we have to align our speed up and slow down with the points where people physically interact. So uh, imagine the ball, even if we slow it down at some point, we have to bring it up to speed that when the person wants to catch it, they're back in the real time so that they're in sync with what they see. This is the one where we haven't got very far. Uh, we, I think we have understood the model we need but this is really a hard thing to do. And the last one is more the overall experience that can be created. So how do we make this that it feels right, that it is a convincing uh, thing we see, that our brain realizes this as a positive, as a thing that could happen, that it's not like an odd thing. And here we feel that already the first prototype showed that people had quite a positive experience. So how does the system look like? We have the environment and that's perceived by the user as well as by the sensors. And the user gets the environment, but uh, she also gets a changed environment by the display and speakers. And so we have to match somehow the information that comes from the real environment and the information that comes from the display. And we do this by sensors and something we call the amplification unit. In this point, this is only slowing down an image feed, but we could imagine there could be much more in there. The whole thing is a part of a bigger picture. Our ambition device is controlled by EEG, EMG gaze, like by physiological sensing. 
and we have different cameras that take in different information and we can alter things like zoom, spectrum, speed, etc. And now we had a preliminary evaluation and you can see on the picture what we did. So we had a person jumping and people should guess how high the person was jumping. And what we saw here is that uh, we couldn't really find a difference statistically because we had very few participants, but already our participants felt that this is giving them more insight, that this is sort of enhancing their ability to perceive things. And to conclude, what we ask is really moving away from taking binoculars for everything we do towards a system where we have something like classes, where we constantly get this type of amplification and we can use it without really knowing it. And here, especially the input side is one of the big, big challenges. The whole thing is uh, done in the context of the European project Amplify. It's an ERC project that looks at human perception and how we can amplify it towards building artificial reflexes. And if you're interested in the project, uh, look at the website amp.ubicom.net. There are a number of projects, uh, other prototypes that we have tried, or just ask questions now if you have time. Thank you very much.